Hey guys, so I want to show you the fittings that I have for a Caracal, normal Caracal, not Navy issue. Uh, I will upgrade to a Navy issue eventually. I've only just started uh, running a Caracal um, as a missile boat for running high uh, level anomalies in Nullsec space. Um, basically using the range of heavy missiles as well as a couple of skills to outrange the majority of anomaly threats and continue to maintain that range and then also take them down. Now, I actually recorded some footage of me doing some anomalies earlier before I completed the fit that I wanted for my, my Caracal. Basically, I didn't have the money. Now, the DPS might look pretty low, uh, 300. I've seen people getting like upwards of 400, 500 DPS on, on missile boats, but I didn't invest into missile skills when I started. I invested into industry um, and only just started picking up the missile skills now. There is only a couple more things that I want to change with my Caracal. Um, the only thing that I'm wanting to change right now is getting rid of the small energy Nosferatu and getting a, um, a bigger one because energy Nosferatus are incredibly good for um, PvE ratting. So I'm running four Kaldari Navy Heavy Missiles. I would recommend that you get the best possible. The Undertaker or the Navy Heavy Missiles are the best, so I would recommend that you try and find those. Range is the most important here. You can do it with the lower DPS Heavy Missiles if you want, but it will just take you longer to kill things, so therefore your efficiency will be slightly worse. I have a Warp Disruptor um, as a mid-slot just because uh, the off chance that I might uh, run into a PvP situation and I want to try and get a Warp Disruptor off. Um, I'm running a Micro Warp Drive because I just want that extra boost of speed. Basically, when I'm cleaning up, essentially what happens, because you maintain range for so long at the uh, you know on the outskirts of these PvE scenarios, um, the Micro Warp Drive comes in useful when you want to just boost to get the, the you, you want to go boost get, and get your loot. So that's that's basically the only reason I run the Micro Warp Drive. It's good for good for kiting, but also good for boosting to go and grab your loot. I run a Challenger Reactive Shield that's good for uh, reducing damage incoming to you, and it's very likely that you're just on you're only going to be taking damage coming from missiles, so it helps keep your shields healthy. I'm running a pretty good shield booster, um, always important because if you do get within range or take more damage, it's going to be an issue. And then I'm also running a, a medium capacitor. The medium capacitor will help me out in a situation if I need to just burn my shield booster for a while to keep myself safe. Uh, I'm running an anti-explosive screen because the only things that should be hitting you at the range that you're firing at should be other missiles. So that helps you uh, maintain your shield integrity when you are firing at range. And then I'm running a um, warhead um, calefaction um, catalyst, which helps increase missile damage. And then I'm also running a rocket fuel cache partition. You could also run the one that increases reload speed, which is obviously very important. That will massively increase your DPS with heavy weapons, but I couldn't afford it. I will eventually replace my rocket fuel cache partition. I'll probably end up um, replacing the anti-explosive screen because I just don't need it. Um, but I'll probably end up replacing that for the reload speed rigging, um, and that will give me a really, really good missile boat to work with to do PvE ratting in Nullsec. That is my setup for a Caracal. I, I, I recommend it. It is the best missile boat out there um, as a cruiser tier 5 uh, to go and take on these PvE sections. I'm currently in Jita. Jita is the biggest trading hub right now. It's where I kitted out my, it's where I kitted out my cruiser. If, if you're building a new ship and you want the parts, I would always recommend coming to Jita. It is the, the biggest population ATC. You're going to get stuff immediately and usually it'll be a competitive price because there are so many people trying to list stuff at that station. So if your phone or device or whatever you're playing on can handle it, Jita is the best station for this. And what I do then is I just pick a um, I pick a Nullsec area, Valley of the Silent. Let's go to the region map. And I'm like, okay, right, cool. Let's go and jump over to this place and set as destination. Uh, it's the one that's closer than 27 jumps maybe. Oops. Uh, let's go back. New Eden, Valley of the Silent, region map. I want one that's closer than 27 jumps, maybe. Here we go. Uh, set as destination. That's 22 jumps. That'll do. And then we're going to do that. We're going to keep an eye on our, our ship, because obviously when we start autopiloting in in null sec, it can get dangerous. Going to head back over, uh, and I'm going to show you some footage of what I do uh at those anomaly sites, I was doing tier 8 anomalies earlier, and I actually had some light missiles, so it was even slower. Um, but I will I will show you what we do once we get to those anomalies just now. I am quite happily clearing um, level 8 anomalies, so I'm going to show you how I do it. First of all, 
I'm going to go to this little button down here, which basically means that you can cut off certain things on your scan HUD. I'm going to cut off asteroid belts. The only reason I'd ever want asteroid belts when I'm running a combat ship is if I'm coming into Nullsec and I want to hunt miners. Um, hunting miners when you're in a cargo hold that has 900 meters cubed usually is pointless because you're never going to be able to hold all of the ore. A lot of the time what you'll do is you'll run with a friend who's running a mining barge. You will kill the miner and you'll just steal all their ore and run away. So I'm going to get rid of asteroid belts and also going to get rid of asteroids because when I warp in to these anomalies, a lot of the time they have asteroids there. So that's always a pain. So because my my um, because my uh, ship has a range of 60 kilometers, which you can find out by going to... One second, I'm going to get rid of the scan HD. You find out by going to my heavy Navy missile launcher, 60 kilometer range, and my Caldari lights have a range of 40 kilometers. So I've got two sets of ranges. My my left two most missiles are at 60 kilometers, and my right two most missiles are at 40 kilometers. Most of the time, I'm only using my heavies because I might try to maintain range. What I'm going to do is, if you don't know how to do this, you want to warp in at distance. A little bit... Ooh, bollocks. What you want to do is warp in at distance. A little bit like when you orbit... I'm going to warp in at a range, let's say warp in at a range of 33 kilometers. I'm going to let my uh, ship align and do that. So we'll, sh we'll show you just a second what that means for running a missile boat. Now, I would recommend if you want to take on high-level anom anomalies when you are not particularly running high-level equipment, um, you do need to likely do it in a missile boat or anything with long range. Keeping your range in these engagements is always really important because if you try to go in with something like a Thrasher and you have, a, even if you've got high level projectile turrets, you're going to struggle a lot of the time. So you can see here, I've got a load of them. They're in fairly, they're in fairly close range. And so I'm actually just going to start immediately tapping everything. Uh, I'm not going to pick a target right now because the most important thing for me is I want to start to kite away. So I'm going to orientate myself on the map. I'm going to double tap where I want to kite away from. I, in general, want to kite away from the um, the units that I'm actually fighting. I'm going to activate all of my missiles. And I'm just going to kind of let my... In fact, I'm going to also activate my ballistic system just to make sure we clear these guys out really quickly. Because the main thing for me right now is to start to get a kiting vector away from these PvE mobs. Because they're all going to generally spawn in a similar location. So for the biggest thing for me right now is I'm just going to actually quickly deactivate that because it started using a decent amount of my capacitor. Uh, I'm going to quickly pop my shield booster. It doesn't need to be popped for very long. It's going to get it up back up to 100% pretty quickly. Uh, and now I'm just going to kind of let my heavy missiles, in fact, actually, I think my light missiles are now going out of range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my light missiles on, which uh, a target that is in range. This guy's in 34 kilometers. I'm going to let my heavy missiles continue to attack the one that's at the longest range. You can see my heavy missiles just took them out pretty quickly. Uh, and now I'm going to actually just smack everything on these remaining PVE uh, targets. So these guys should get taken out pretty quickly. So what I've done is I've warped in at range. I've chosen a vector of of basically keeping myself going at a certain uh, at a certain speed away from my targets. I'm maintaining my defense ever so slightly just by popping my shield booster. I have an energy Nosferatu, so I am stealing capacitor from the uh, from the mobs that I'm attacking. And we should slowly. Oh, we're taking out Blackbird. So it's, oh, here we go. Here we go. We got it. We got it. We'll get it in a couple more hits. Just got to wait for the missiles to travel. And there we go. So we've got a load of bounties that we just picked up there. And you can see they've all spawned in roughly the same location. So we're about 60 kilometers right now. Um, we're actually out of range. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tap here to the side. I'm going to change my, my vector ever so slightly. So I now I'm, I'm running parallel across them. Now they're going to catch up to me. Um, this guy's going to be the first one that comes into range. They're going to catch up to me. Uh, and once they are within 50 to 60 kilometers, most of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my ship back into the same vector that uh, that I was running away at. Because they are going to close the distance on me at this stage right now. And that's okay. Uh, I want them to close the distance. But the most important thing for me is that I, I then maintain that distance. So I don't want to do this forever um, because they'll eventually catch up to me, but it's okay to do this for the time being until the majority of them are hitting that 40 to 60 kilometer mark. If anyone comes in the 40 kilometer mark, I'm just going to smack my light missiles on them. But again, like I said, I want to replace those with heavy missiles because as you can see, I'm barely getting touched. 
spamming heavy missiles at range right now. Uh, and this is allowing me to kill tier 8 anomaly PvE units um, in a tier 5 cruiser with almost no damage to myself. The biggest threat that I've got is someone warping in and killing me in Nullsec. Um, and I've got light missiles, so even if they get close to me, I have a, a pretty good response in a lot of ways. I also have a, a, um, a couple of PvP options on me with the increased ballistic missiles. I've also got a, a warp disruptor if I do end up winning the fight. That's why I'm just keeping a couple of PvP options on me as well. So a couple of these guys are actually getting into that 40 kilometer range now. So what I'm going to do is smack the light missiles on. I'm going to change back to kite away from them. So I want to kite directly uh, away from them if I can. That's not quite directly away from them. That was a pretty terrible vector change. That is more like directly away from them. And now I'm just going to let my missiles do the work again. And you rinse and repeat this through all of the waves. You just want to make sure that you are traveling away from your targets. I'm actually, this is probably a better way of doing it. You just want to make sure you are traveling away from your targets when you are um, about to clean out the wave. Because if you are close within like 30 to 40 kilometers when the next wave spawns, a whole crap ton of units are going to spawn on top of your head. So you just want to make sure that you're maintaining that range away from the spawn point of these PvE targets. And I'm just about to clean up the anomaly that I started showing you earlier. Uh, and you can see that it's just littered with looting. This should be the last Ferox that I've got to take out. I don't mind getting close to this guy because it's basically me versus him at this point. And I have a superior arsenal of missiles that is going to blow this guy out of the water. Um... Every small anomaly that I clear, I usually make about 1.8 mil in bounties, and then I have also the, um, I also then have the, the looting to do, and the looting can be hit or miss depending on what you find. A reactive shield hardener is alright, um, but some things aren't going to be as, as easy. So there we go, we've picked up anything. We'll just go through and loot, and I'll, I'll tell you if I find anything that's particularly good. Um, destroy a railgun, that's not going to be worth anything. Shield me, medium shield booster will be worth a, a, a significant amount. Caldari debris would be worth it if people were more into buying that kind of stuff right now. Usually, I ended up just I, I'm going to train scrap metal processing and uh, and reprocess most of the stuff myself. Um, the components of those those particular um, debris are worth quite a lot. That's not worth a huge amount. This is the hardest part, by the way. I don't run an afterburner or a, a warp drive, a micro warp drive, so <laughs> I have to like slowly go around and grab all of the loot. Uh, once I get all the money and get my, my setup optimized, I'll probably end up running some kind of movement, um, either a micro warp drive just for that, that boost to kiting, or a afterburner to increase my maximum velocity. Uh, again, ship debris. Ship debris, I don't mind because you can reprocess it to get some some decent components that you can sell off. Not many people actually buy the ship debris themselves. Um, although some of the bigger stations like GT might have luck. I don't often sell at GT or I often sell at Nakagard, so not many people buy that kind of stuff over there. But I probably will make a stop at GT on my way back over. Railgun, not really worth that much. Kaldari ship debris again. And we'll go for one more battle cruiser. We'll see what we get. Um, Mark, yeah, MK5 10M 10 10N afterburner is worth a, an okay amount. So I, you know, I probably made about 2.5 mil from just just clearing this out. This probably took me in total 20 minutes to do. So I can probably do three of these small anomalies an hour, making between if I'm lucky three or four mil an anomaly so i'm making about 10 mil an hour just doing this kind of stuff uh and it's pretty safe i didn't even uh i didn't even get a scratch to my armor i just had my shield booster going when i needed it maintained my range it would be a lot quicker if i managed to go and upgrade and get four sets of uh heavy missiles because they can, can maintain my range much further but having the light missiles allows me to go in for the kill as well so it's a bit of it's a bit of a um a swings and roundabouts when it comes to that kind of thing but that is clearing those anomalies with a missile boat which is really really good way to make money in nullsec if you feel comfortable enough doing